I'm Luke Hatfield, alongside me, Joe Massey, our West Brom correspondent in the Express and Star. We're at the Liberty Stadium. Swansea nil, West Brom nil. Was that worth the two hour, 45 minute drive, Joe Massey? Um, the best part of it was actually coming to Swansea, wasn't it? The people here are absolutely lovely. Oh, brilliant, brilliant what a club. friendly club. They're so nice here. Top notch food, too. Top notch food, yeah, I thought you'd like that. Um, they were lovely here. The game. No, um, it wasn't a thriller, it's fair to say. It was a far fling from the uh, the home fixture, put it that yeah, way. That's very true. Here comes the world away, wasn't there, from <laughs> yeah. that game. Absolute world away, yeah. Um, just spoke, well, Sam Bench just in his press conference, he described it as a strange game. Mm. Um, he was a bit surprised just how, like, the lack of clear-cut chances in the game. He said that you know, Albion, we know, we know what Albion are like as a team. They play mm. great football, and they, they've got some wonderful attacking players, and... They came here to give it a good go. Swansea are similar, really. They've got some good players up front. Andre Ayu, Ian Brewster, um, Conor Gallagher. They're an exciting team. Mm. Um, and both teams sort of set up in a way to play good football today. Um, it just didn't really happen um, mm. in the final third. They both had passages of play in the build-up, but then everything just seemed to break down um, in, the fi in, in, the, in that final third. Um, I mean, I think uh, they had two shots on target. I can't massively remember them, if I'm honest. No. Um, Albion had one, which was Cullen Robinson, sort of, it broke from him in the box and keeper made a decent save, but I mean, he's going to save it. Mm. Um, and other than that, not a great deal to report, really. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a pretty uneventful game. Just Shame. completely nullified each other, didn't they, in, in that respect? I mean, you said you remember a keeper making a save. I don't remember Sam Johnson or the Swansea stopper making a single stop. And it was just, it just seemed very much like two teams just completely, as I said, nullifying each other. No real goal mouth action. Um, I don't really know what, why that was the case because it, not, it wasn't like either side set up too defensively. No, no, it's just, it, it, it was just both teams in, in the final third guilty of just that bit of spark. Perhaps that little bit of tempo, maybe just moving the ball a little bit quicker. Um, Albion were better at it in the first half. They found really these nice little pockets of space. They did pop it around really well at times. I thought mm. Romain Sawyers was really good in the first half. And um, then, yeah, just just broke down really just when it mattered. And second half, probably they weren't they weren't as good really. Mm. And after the break, but they had some big big chances at the end. When I say big chances, they were they were big chances in the context of this game. They weren't like glorious glorious. You, you have to score. That's kind of a good time for us. Oh yeah, um, good timing. But. Um, yeah, Jake Livermore right at the end, really. Um, really good run from Carl Edwards. Um, came off the bench, made a, made a good impact. He really good run, and he sort of found Kravinovic at the byline. He sent in a cross, and it sort of broke kindly for Livermore. And he's sort of eight yards, ten yards out, and he, you're thinking, this is the moment, this is the moment, and he fires over, and that was probably the biggest chance of the match. And it's probably more than a half chance, but it wasn't like a gilt edge chance, if you know what I mean, a clear cut chance. And, that was it, really. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a very um, uneventful game. Even though it wasn't dull, really, it was quite entertaining patches because they are good teams and they are good. There's some good players out there, yeah. but it was just. It was just when it got to that final third, it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. I was speaking to the fans outside. I said to them, I mean, the way results have gone this weekend, yes, Leeds have won, but more important for Albion was it not to lose this game. Getting a point isn't the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world, but it's just said something really interesting there. He said, it, when, you, when you don't get the result you want, what you want to be able to come away with is, is knowing what you have to do better, really. Mm. And the truth is today, what they had to do better was be more clinical in the final third, maybe speed it up a little bit. They've been so defensively solid now for a very, very long time. We all mm. know about that six-game unbeaten run where they conceded six shots on target, didn't they, in that run? Mm. Three, three of those shots were at Millwall from Jed Wallace, all outside the box. We've said it many times. And... Today, again, they've, they've restricted um, Swansea to very, to next to nothing, if we're being honest, yeah. very, very little. The, the, the platform, the defensive platform is definitely, definitely there. Um, which, to be honest, like, we all know how good Mateus Pereira is, how good Callum Robinson is, how good how Robson Carno is, how good Kamal Brzezicki is going to be, Matt Phillips, who's not here today because he's had a baby, mm. Carl Edwards. Albion are going to score goals. They're going to score goals, um, in the, obviously, in the remaining nine games of the season. So. Keeping that defensive, that solidity is, is absolutely massive. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad point. It's not a bad point when you think um, Brentford, Brentford won, but not the Forest didn't. Fulham didn't win. It's still six points to third as it was today, mm. before, before the games today. Obviously, the only disappointing thing is Leeds did win and Albion are now second for the first time. I think they were, since February, at the start of February, they got back top. So 
that is a bit disappointing as like because obviously we you want to win the league but um, look, being in the top two is all that really matters, and they are, and they're six points clear still, which is what, exactly what they started the day with. Yeah, still positives to take. Uh, got the clean sheet. I, for one, thought Shemi Ajayi played very, very well. I and mean, you just, as a as a centre back with his pace, I know they didn't really, I know he didn't, he wasn't really put under too much pressure today, but yeah. I think he really showed his quality. Oh, he's, he is quality though, isn't he? He's, mm. a, he's, a, he's been, I mean, 1.5 million rising to 2 million pounds. He was bought for in the summer from Rotherham. I mean, bargain. Uh, he is an absolute bargain, there's no doubt about it. There's, I can't see any area in his game. He's got everything, really. Everything you could want to be a top, top class centre back. I mean, he, he really is such a well balanced defender. Yeah, very, very good today. Interesting because Bilic took off Carl Bartley um, mm. for Darnell Furlong just to get a bit more. A bit more zip down that right hand side. They were um, better for the changes, I thought. They were better for the changes. Yeah, with Kamal Krizicki coming on as well for Robinson. Who, Robinson was quiet today, really. Mm. Um, and Krizicki gave a bit more spark. Um, but yeah, I mean, Ajay, he's played alongside Agazi recently. He's played alongside O'Shea at the back today and yeah. Bartley. So he's been that mainstay at the back and he's, he's done an absolutely fantastic job because his partners have been chopping and changing. And important now for Albion just to kind of keep ticking over like it would be nice to get a win sooner rather than later but as long as they're not losing games they're still in a half decent position well, I mean, yeah, they're in more than a half decent position they're in a cracking position really they're still they're, they're still six points clear of third look there's still only nine games left to go look it's a huge game next weekend huge mm. game against Blues I mean that, that's one of them where sort of like I mean it's just everyone's going to be up for it aren't they it's going to yeah. be, it should be a cracker just like it was at St Andrews earlier in the season let's mm. be honest that was an absolute thriller so look I think that I think They'll put in a. I really. I expect them to put in a big performance next weekend and uh, and get back to winning ways. Fingers crossed they do. But yeah, they're in a great position still. They're still in a great position. Yeah. So an absolute thriller here <laughs> at Swansea. Um, for all the latest match reaction from Albion, make sure you stay with ExpressingStar.com.